Good morning and welcome to San Diego People. I'm Alan Denton. Tax season is a great time to prepare your finances and create a budget for the year. It all begins by looking at your projected income and your fixed expenses to see where you can cut and in some areas where you can save. Joining me today is Doug Wright, Chief Financial Officer for Mission Federal Credit Union. Doug, thanks for being with me today. Thank you. As a credit union, what type of financial services and uh, uh, do you offer from the standpoint of helping people kind of get a head start on their taxes? Sure, we're not exact. We're not tax advisors, but right. we do certainly deal with people's finances, and so we do. We offer services and you know advice on loan lending and loans mm -hmm. and the tax impact. So we can certainly help them, although we do refer them back to financial to their tax yeah. advisors for the permanent. Now, when you say uh, help them with uh, uh, financial uh, situations with their loans, this year the tax laws changed is, uh, from the standpoint of how much you can deduct, I guess, on your mm -hmm. home loan, uh, also uh, on, on taxes and, and that sort of thing. So help us understand what's going on there. I'm sure you've had a lot of customers come in and ask you, yeah, what do I do, do? We do certainly have a lot of customers talking about that. Um, Congress did change the overall mortgage limit deduction, mm -hmm. and so it used to be that you could deduct interest on mortgages up to $1 million. So if you had a mortgage loan that was less than $1 million, you could deduct the interest on that. And in California, that's a big thing because the houses are so expensive here compared to the rest of the country, with the exception of New Jersey, New York, and some of the northeastern states. Absolutely, that's true. We do a lot of mortgage loans in the $750,000 to $1 million, $2 million, uh -huh. range, and they moved that deduction from a million, a million dollars down to 750000 So it very well could impact a lot of our members who are buying homes that exceed seven hundred fifty or $800,000. Mm -hmm. So it's important for customers and, and to understand that that change is in place. The other thing they did on the uh, loan side, the home equity side, is that it, you used to be able to deduct interest regardless of what you use the proceeds for on home equity loans up to $100,000 dollars in terms of a loan amount. Mm -hmm. uh, they, Congress in the new tax act removed that deduction and only made it available if you use the proceeds for home improvement purposes. Yeah. So if you're using a home equity loan to pay off credit card debt or to finance college expenses for your kids or whatever, that interest is no longer deductible. So that's important for people to know. And, and I'm sure that's going to hit people pretty hard this time oh, yeah, around. Yeah, people I mean, did especially rely in on states that. like California and as I said some mm -hmm. of the northeastern states. At, um, very expensive, expensive housing. Uh, from the standpoint of selling a house, what do the new tax laws say to you? The tax laws really didn't change the what the rules are around selling a house. Uh, the old rules and the current rules indicated that if you are single and you sell a home, uh, mm -hmm. you have about two hundred fifty thousand dollars in gain that you can recognize without without it impacting your taxes. So say you bought the home for three hundred thousand and you sold it for five hundred thousand dollars. The new rules and the old rules say you don't have to pay taxes on that difference as long as you've lived in the home two of the last five years. And that hasn't changed. Mm -hmm. For people who are married and filing jointly, that limit is five hundred thousand dollars. So you can uh, realize a gain of less than five hundred thousand dollars and not have to to pay taxes on that. If mm -hmm. your gain is more than 500000 if you've been in the home a long, long time and seen a lot of appreciation, then that's something you do have mm -hmm. to worry about. And, and a lot of people it. are concerned, too, about from the standpoint of their take-home pay, because they've always, already been taxed so much right. with the state and, mm -hmm. and federal uh, taxes. But uh, from the standpoint of uh, high-interest credit cards, how, how, mm -hmm. what, what do you recommend to reduce some of that debt? Certainly. Uh, you know, there are still, really still some very good strategies for reducing high interest interest debt. Uh, probably the easiest way is to refinance that and a couple of ways to do that are to take a look and find some credit cards with zero balance transfer options. There are a number of credit cards out there that offer you zero balance, zero percent interest for a period of time, 12 to 24 months. And so mm -hmm. if you can transfer a high interest credit card over to a zero percent you know, credit card and pay down substantially on that credit card balance over mm -hmm. the 12 to 24 month period of time, mm -hmm. then and you'll reduce your interest costs substantially. Another way to do that, even though
Interest is no longer deductible. A credit card can cost you, in terms of interest, somewhere between 16 and 25 percent. And that hits the bottom line, the take-home pay, the net. Absolutely. And so if you refinance to a home equity line, that interest is probably in the 5 to 6 percent range. So mm -hmm. you're paying about 20, 10 percent less in interest each year on that balance, mm -hmm. which is a substantial savings for a lot of people. Uh, sticking with the topic but uh, drifting away just a little bit, when is it a good time? And I, I hear this all the time from people. When should I refinance my home? If I'm only going to be in it a couple more years, the interest rates, I guess, are still pretty low, but starting to go up. Mm -hmm. We don't know where they're going to go to. We, we're hearing maybe two, three, or more mm -hmm. interest rates. We don't know if it's going to be a half a point a, a, you know, or a point or what from the feds. Mm -hmm. So when is it a good time to refinance? If you have a higher interest rate than what's being offered currently in terms of mortgage rates, and mortgage rates have been going up, but they're still very low from a historical standpoint. So there are still probably a number of people out there who have a higher interest first mortgage mm -hmm. than they do than what are current rates. Okay. So if you are in that situation, uh, the old adage I said used to say that basically it wouldn't make sense if you were going to be in your home less than about five years. Mm -hmm. But a lot of lenders have come out with no closing cost, 0% upfront cost types of mortgage loans. And so in those situations, you may pay a little bit higher rate, but that rate may still be lower mm -hmm. than what your first mortgage is. And if that's the case, you can get in and get a lower rate pay and pay no closing costs up front. And if yeah. that, that yeah. can make sense, even if you're not in your home for that Yeah, long. and I've heard that when you do that, uh, you want to stay, say for instance, if the, if the, if the interest rate is uh, at least 2% lower mm -hmm. than then you want to make that move. You want oh, to make that. Yeah. But but what do you go by? What well, what are the numbers you look at when you say okay, yeah. you are to refinance because you're in a certain category. Yeah, we'll take a look at any situation um, and try, we'll run the numbers for our customers and prospective uh, borrowers because uh, it can make sense if you're going to stay in the home for a long time. It can make sense at three quarters of a percent or one percent. Really? Okay. It just depends on the individual circumstances. You know, the rule of thumb is somewhere between one and two percent. but. Yeah. There are situations where even less than that can make sense. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so from, from, a, from the standpoint of what's happening with the tax laws this year, anything else that you can think of that comes to mind that says, it sends up a red flag mm -hmm. that people need to be aware of, of this particular aspect of the tax laws mm -hmm. as well? I know we've talked about the interest and, and so on and so forth, but yeah, what think, else comes to mind? I think the other thing that uh, people need to be aware of is the impact on state and local income taxes and property taxes. We're in a situation where we pay, we're California, we pay relatively high income taxes, right. and because our homes are expensive, we pay relatively high property yeah. taxes. And Congress and the new tax act has seriously limited the amount that you can deduct in income taxes and property taxes. The combined limit is ten thousand dollars, which, for a lot of people here, they pay either in property taxes or income taxes alone ten thousand dollars a year. I started to say, yeah. So it's a drop in the bucket. To what absolutely. The, yeah. So Congress, on the other hand did expand the standard deduction from uh, $12,000 or $13,000 for a married filing jointly person or, or a couple to yeah. $24,000. So more people will qualify for the standard deduction. But if your taxes are high, property and income taxes are high, mm -hmm. you're going to see probably some reduction in the amount that you can itemize. Yeah, and everybody needs to be aware of this because yeah. the last thing you want is to be blindsided Absolutely. when you have your taxes yeah. prepared. So we're recommending to all of our members, you know, even though these uh, things don't, and they went into effect as of the first of the year, so they really didn't impact the 17 taxes that people right. are filing right now. They certainly do impact the 2018 taxes. So yeah. we're recommending people really take a look at their tax situation now, talk with their tax advisor if they have one, or a ta get a tax advisor if they don't, and really assess that situation now so that they can plan on a go forward basis for the rest yeah. of the year. Great information. Doug, thank you for stopping by today. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you. Uh -huh. yeah. Appreciate it. Well, coming up on San Diego, people, tax changes you should be aware of before the April 17th deadline. We've got that and more coming up. Stay with us.